So since it's Memorial Day and it's my day off and uh, end up working at home more than I am, if I would have been at work, I thought I would get some things done. And uh, so I've been working all morning and thought I would add this part to a little beer review uh, that you'll either see at the beginning of this or after this. But um, I got my, if you look, I've uh, been talking about, you know, doing another beer stand. I got me uh, another SQ14 burner. So there she is. Uh, there's the original one, you know, from my boil kettle. Uh, if you remember, I got my second keg converted to a keg used for my hot liquor tank. Um, the burner came in, and for this burner, I'm not going to build a stand like that out of wood. Uh, what happened was we uh, got some new furniture, so we had an old bed frame that we were using that we're not going to use anymore. So this morning I got the old angle grinder out and took all the little pieces, parts off of it and uh, done some measuring and trying to figure out how I want to go with this thing. And uh, uh, I've got plenty of angle iron to do what I, I think I'm going to do. Uh, basically what I'll do is build like a... Uh, I think the measurements for the legs on the burner are like 19 and a half by 14, somewhere around in there. So I'm going to do like a 15 by 20, just uh, a square with the uh, angle iron, and uh, 15 by 20, and well, I guess I kind of should have had this stuff laid out, but you know, this is obviously bigger than what it will be, but it'll be a big square, 15 by 20. And then in the middle, I'll mount me a metal plate for the burner to actually sit on. And then I'm going to use these bigger pieces of angle iron. Um, they're a little bit bigger. That was the actual rails for the bed. And I'm going to cut those in two foot sections and have those welded to the corners for legs. So uh, it'll sit up two feet off of the ground. Actually, it won't. It'll be more than that because... Uh, those legs won't sit actually on the ground. I'll mount another plate of some sort. I hadn't quite figured that part out yet, and I guess the sun's probably my camera, but um, probably mount another little plate or something on the bottom to be able to mount the casters that I got from Lowe's. Two straights and two swivels. And they're rated at 175 pounds, so that's going to be plenty for what I need to do. And Oh, I, well, I do have it drawn up a little bit, so I don't know if you can see that, but it's just going to be a little square, 20 by 15 square. And then it'll kind of sort of look like that. Of course, there'll be a metal plate here for the burner to sit on. And then at the bottom, there'll be another plate of some sort. Uh, and the uh, casters will be welded to the corners for that. And somewhere in between, that will uh, I'll have some kind of angle iron or some, something. I haven't quite figured that part out yet to mount the march pump. So as long as I get the march pump, Mount it in there and have enough clearance from the bottom for the hose to come out because it's going to be mounted with the out going up so for the air bubbles to be able to travel up and not lose my prime. And yeah, uh, looking at like, uh, gosh, I done some math a while ago, I think maybe if I remember right. The burner is like a foot high, and if I go two foot high with my legs. So you got three feet plus the um, casters. So that'll put my um, hot liquor tank, you know, on up pretty good, a little bit higher than what I'd originally planned, but that's fine because that'll help my transfer speed a little bit to my mash ton. So anyway, there you go. Uh, getting ready to transfer some beer over. I've, oh, oh, well, I'll just show you that because uh, I'm doing a little experiment since everybody's doing all these experiments like that. Last, not last weekend, two weeks ago was my first 10 gallon batch. And I did the uh, frozen toes, which is the dogfish head clone that I've done several times now. And I love so good. So I did a 10 gallon batch of it. And you can see it's in two five gallon, split it up in, you know, two different five gallons. And that's actually a nut brown ale that I did uh, a week ago. But what I'm going to do is only transfer one of those over to a glass cardboard to do a secondary. Uh, and the other one I'm going to do the dry hopping actually in the, the primary. And uh, they'll stand there another week. And I, I've, you know, you've been reading all this stuff about whether or not it's you need to do a secondary at all. And 
unless you're dry hopping and some people say well you don't even need to do a secondary when you dry hop so I'm just gonna since I've got my first 10 gallon batch and I can do it right now is be a good time I'm just gonna dry hop you know one five gallon batch in the uh, in the primary and then I'll do a secondary and dry hop the other five gallons and see if there is any kind of taste difference I don't know if there will be or not but I think if I were going to do uh, harvest my yeast it might still be better to do a secondary I mean uh, yeah to do a secondary so you could harvest your yeast from the primary but who knows I mean there's just so much uh, opinion on all that stuff but it's gonna be something simple for me to do with what I'm doing so I'm gonna give it a shot just to see what's up everybody uh, it's about a hundred and ten degrees here in the North Carolina foothills on June 1st and it ain't supposed to be that but uh, now it's seriously up in the upper 90s the last couple of days and I hate it but uh, what can you do about it uh, I mentioned uh, earlier in this video you know that I was working on my boil kettle stand that I was going to use the uh, old bed frame for and I cut some of it up and uh, took it to work and one of my buddies uh, well, it's my little idea together, and uh, there you go. That's what I got so far. Um, the bed frame part, of course, is from here down, and I was going to do the bottom and wood, but I decided since I had another old piece of plywood laying around, I would just use that for a base, so I took some more angle iron and bolted it to that three-quarter inch plywood, and then bolted uh, the legs of the little stand to that so it's not going anywhere and I've got 175 pound uh, weight capacity dollies uh, wheels on the bottom so and there's the SQ14 burner I just had a piece of metal cut just a flat piece of metal to set in there and it's been painted none of the rest of it has uh, and the boil kettle or the uh, burner uh, is sitting on top of that you can see the SQ14 Bayou Classic, and it's actually a little crooked. Uh, I don't know how we missed that. I thought I had everything lined up when we welded it, but it was leaning a little bit. Uh, so I had to take some little wooden strips and put them under this lip to raise this side up. Actually, for the slope of my patio, too, but it was it was leaning pretty good, so I had to do a little more than I thought I would. But uh, Got the level on it, and it's pretty level right there. And if you notice, I got my march pump mounted over here. Um, the way that thing was leaning, it leaned further the other way. I didn't realize it until I got it out here. So I had mounted my uh, march pump there in one pre-existing hole and drilled another one. So I'm going to take that off. And it'll basically sit like that, but on this back corner right here. So the march pump and I'll show this maybe when I get done before I load this video up but I'll have the march pump mounted right here and it'll scoot out a little bit away from where it's sitting right now all right check it out uh, before it gets dark I thought I'd go ahead and show you this because it is complete and I uh, threw some primer paint some black paint on there and we got it looking halfway decent so there's the finished product uh, did move the pump around to this back side um, I wish I could have mounted one little thing different so I could turn the head around and get this cord pointing down, which is no big deal, but I'll deal with that. It's no big deal. So basically the silicone tubing comes off of this valve. I don't have my clamps on there yet, but they'll come off of this valve and run down into the bottom of the pump and prime it. And with the out pointing up, uh, all the air bubbles should rise and keep the pump primed and I can turn the pump on and it'll pump it right inside the door to my mash tun onto that valve so there you go it should work fine actually I know it works because I've done it with just uh, this boil kettle sitting on a burner on the concrete there with the pump laying on the concrete so this is all put together now it should work just as well if not better so there you have it jake's little bull kettle stand looks pretty nice i have to say so there you go i'm about done i think i don't think i need to build anything else uh, 
I'm going to leave my, I was going to build a different stand for my, my boil kettle, but I'm just going to leave it alone. So it works fine. It's already built. And uh, you know me, I'm not, uh, I don't make the prettiest stuff in the world, but it, it functions good. So that's what matters. Again, questions, comments, feel free to lay them on me. Later.